Okay, so let's do another example. Uh, it says verify Stokes theorem when f is equal to i plus xj plus yzk and s is the surface defined uh, by x squared plus y squared equals 4, z goes from 0 to 4. Okay, so let me state Stokes theorem right here first. Okay, so here's Stokes theorem. So it says the line integral of f around the boundary of s equals the flux of the curl uh, of f across s. So we have two things to show. We have this uh, one integral on this side equals this double integral on this side. So I'm going to work on the double integral first. So now let's, uh, let me draw the surface now right here. So here's my surface. Uh, you can see here that uh, x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's a circle of radius 2. Uh, so centered at 0, 0. And then uh, z goes from 0 to 4. So it's going to make a cylinder. So you have these circles of radius 2 going up. And you have the z going from 0 to 4. So this would be my surface S. So now let's parameterize the surface S. So parameterizing, well, the X and Y are on the, on the circle of radius 2. So therefore, X is going to be 2 cosine U. Y would be 2 sine U. And Z gets a range between 0 and 4. So you can just call Z V. OK, so then our mapping would be the following. So here's my mapping, R U V at V, uh, 2 cosine U, 2 sine U, V. And U here, since you go around the whole uh, circle, it's going to be from 0 to 2 pi. And the uh, V, well, the V is the same as Z, and Z goes from 0 to 4. Okay, so let me draw in my uh, D region up here then. Okay, so my D region would be 0 to 2 pi on the U, 0 to 4 on the V. So it's going to be this rectangle, and under my R, is going to map into our cylinder. And again, it's, it's just the surface of the cylinder. It's not the inside of the cylinder, just the, the boundary, just the surface of it. OK, so let me summarize what we have so far. OK, so summarizing, we have our parameterization. Uh, we have our f, and we have our d region here. And we're trying to find this double integral. We know it equals this. OK, uh, so now to figure this out, we have to figure out the curl and also RU cross RV. So let's start doing that. Let's work on RU cross RV. So let's find R, R, RU first. So R derivative with respect to U. Well, uh, looking at the first component, derivative of cosine would be minus sine. So you get minus 2 sine U for the first one. Derivative of sine U would be cosine U. And derivative of V would be 0. So that's my R derivative to respect to U. Let's do R derivative to respect to V beside it here. So here's R derivative to respect to V. Well, the first component over here doesn't have a, a V, so it's 0. The second component doesn't have a V, so it's 0. Oh, sorry, I noticed here. There should be a 2 in front of this. Uh, it doesn't have a V, so it's 0. And uh, derivative V in this guy would be 1, so it would just be 1 here. Okay, now let's do the cross product of these two. So here's my cross product of RU cross RV. So I have my RU guy here, RV guy here. So let's do the I component first. It's going to be cosine of U times 1, then minus 0 times 0. Let me put that here. So we get this done. Then we'll do the J component next. So there'll be minus sign in front here, but it'll be then uh, minus 2 sine u times 1, then 0, minus 0 times 0. Let me put it over here. So we get this then. And lastly, let's do the k component. What's well, going to be this times 0 will be 0, this times that will be 0. So it's like it's just going to be, oh, it should, sorry, not here, it should be a j. So it's just going to be 0 for the k component here. So I get this then. And then simplifying this a bit. Okay, so just factor a 2 out. So it'll be 2 in front, cosine u i plus sine u j plus 0 k. Okay, and ne let's next find the curl. So actually, let me erase a few things here. Let me write my r u cross r b right up here. Then I'll do the curl next. Okay, so I wrote up my r u cross r v here. 
So now let's do the curl of f next. So let me write it right here. So there is a definition of my uh, curl. So we put our i, j, k on top, then the del operator, second row, and then the f function, the third row. So my f function's up here. So there's a one in front of the i, so that means one there, and there's an x in front of the j, one, y, z in front of the k, so y, z here. So let's start doing this. So first we'll do the i component. It's going to be partial y, op y operator acting on y, z minus partial z operator acting on x. So let me write that here. So we get this then. So we got the partial y operating on y, z minus partial z operating on x. Then we'll do the j1 next. So j1 will be partial x acting on y, z minus partial z acting on 1 with a minus sign in front. So let me write that here. So we get this, so again, partial x operator acting on y, z, partial z operator acting on 1. And lastly, let's do the k component. So we partial x operator acting on x minus partial y operator acting on 1. So let me write it here. So we'll get this then. Uh, so again, partial x acting on x, partial y operator acting on 1. So now let's work these out. So partial y operator acting on y, z, uh, well, that's just going to be, y will become 1, so it'll be a z left there. So we're going to have a z, uh, and this one partial uh, z operator acting on x will be 0, so you're just going to get a z in the first component here. So you'll have z, i for the i component. Then the j component, uh, well, partial uh, x operator acting on y, z would be 0. So I guess I can write here, so it'd be 0 and partial z operator icon 1 to be 0 also, so it'd be just like just a sorry, 0 j uh, and then the k component partial x operator acting on x would be 1 and uh, partial y operator, operator acting on 1 would be 0, so just be k here. So there's my uh, curl. Okay, let's start doing the double integral now. Okay, so I have my curl here. So then we'll be doing uh, our flux of our curl over across our S region. Will it be equal to this double integral over D? Okay, so it's going to be the curl composed with our R U V. So in particular, the two cosine U is going to be my X. The two sine U will be my Y. The V will be my Z. Plugging into this then. So where I have a Z, then I'm going to write V. And I guess that will just be a K there. Then I'm going to dot it with this guy and we're integrating over this D region. So let me write down what we have here. So I'll get this. So again, I'm uh, in place of the Z, I'm going to write V. Then there's 0, J, and K. Let's dot it with my RU cross RV, which is up here. And the U is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And the V goes from 0 to 4. Okay, so dotting this, I will have 2 cosine U times V sine u times 0, 0 times k, uh, times 1, sorry, here. Okay, so let me do that. So we get this, because uh, I just noticed actually this 2 should be, on, should be on the outside here. Just like that. Anyway, it doesn't change it. So uh, it's going to be 2 cosine times v, which I have here, and uh, this will be 0, that'll be 0, so just this. Okay, now let's integrate with respect to u first. We're going to be integrating cosine, so right here. Okay, so integrating uh, cosine will be sine, and our TV will still be there. So we're going to put 2u in place, sorry, 2 pi in place of u, and minus put 0 in place of u. So let's do that. So look at this, but now the sine of 2 pi is 0, and uh, the sine of 0 is 0. So therefore, just going to end up being an uh, integral of 0. So the integral of 0 from 0 to 4 is just going to be 0. So uh, therefore, we've shown that the double integral uh, is going to be 0. So this is uh, the one side of Stokes' theorem is 0 now. Now to, now to show that the line integral part is also 0. But I'm going to do that in another video, so let's leave it there. So I'll do the, in part two, I'll do the line integral and show it equals zero also to verify Stokes. Okay, so let's leave it there.